Dustin Rhodes, formerly known as Goldust, has had one of the most underrated and turbulent careers in wrestling. Throughout his 30 plus year career, he has been through a lot, as his journey has often been a very rough one. In a world where glitz and glamour often overshadow the personal struggles of our favourite superstars, this is the untold story of a man who faced the darkest of demons throughout his whole career, addiction. At this time, he said that he was taking about 80 pills a day, half a gallon of vodka a day, and an 8 ball of cocaine every few days. His immense drug problems managed to seep through into his wrestling character and ruin his personal life, but Dustin ultimately managed to pull himself from the dirt and become one of wrestling's most respected figures and most trusted veterans. But how did Dustin go from the dazzling heights of success to the depths of despair and addiction? And how did he rewrite his destiny to redeem himself despite all the odds stacked against him? This is the story of a man who rose from the shadows, the natural Dustin Rhodes. Rhodes was born in Texas in 1969 and he is the son of wrestling legend Dusty Rhodes. His father Dusty was his very first hero, but unfortunately he was not around much in the young Dustin's life due to him being an international wrestling star. This had a massive effect on the young Dustin. Nonetheless, he was a massive wrestling fan and wanted to become a wrestler. His father Dusty was a bit hesitant to allow him to wrestle because of the massive toll that it had on his personal life but he caved in and allowed it eventually. So in his teens Dustin started to train to become a wrestler and he made his debut in 1988 in Florida Championship Wrestling. From day one, Dustin took to wrestling like a fish takes to water. He was clearly a wrestling prodigy and earned himself the moniker as the natural. Perhaps because he had been surrounded by wrestling his entire life, it seemed like his wrestling IQ was already up there from day one. Within the first year of him having his first match, he debuted in WCW where his father was a booker and a major star. In this run, he showed off his wrestling prowess even more but left the company after a few months due to his father Dusty leaving to go to WWE. Of course Dustin had to follow him and he signed for WWE in 1990. He was in WWE for about a year but once again when his father left WWE, he left too. And when Dusty Rose returned back to WCW, Dustin followed him too. During this run in WCW, he showed how good he was as he won the Tag Team Championships and the United States Championship multiple times. Despite all these accomplishments made by Dustin to this point, he was still largely in the shadow of his father. And in the four years he was in WCW, him and his father Dusty fell out with each other and were not talking to each other. The silence between them lasted for about five years but before the silence was broken, Dustin was fired from WCW in 1995. And while on bad terms with his father and desperate to step out of his shadow and make a name for himself, he got a call from Vincent Kennedy McMahon of WWE offering to bring him back to the company. Vince had a new gimmick in mind though, one that was groundbreaking and rarely ever seen in wrestling, and that was the gimmick of Goldust. In this call, Vince mentioned many times to Dustin that Goldust was an androgynous character. Dustin was so eager to work with WWE and get out of his father's shadow that he immediately agreed to Vince's proposition without knowing what androgynous meant and as soon as he got off the phone with Vince, he found a dictionary and looked up the word. And once he saw the definition, which is the state of being neither distinctly masculine nor distinctly feminine, basically genderless, this shocked him and now he was wondering what he had got himself into. This Goldust character was nothing like himself and a complete opposite of who he really was as a person. Nonetheless, he pressed on and debuted the Goldust character in WWE, who was a Hollywood obsessed drag queen. The Goldust character wasn't supposed to explicitly be gay, but was just supposed to have homosexual undertones. In the beginning, Dustin struggled to get the character over because it just wasn't him, but Vince gave him a lot of time to figure out the character, and about 6 months into doing this character, he got it over by acting extra homosexual. Which was unheard of in the wrestling industry, so it caused a lot of chatter around Goldust in a good and a bad way. Goldust became one of the most unique and controversial figures in the professional wrestling industry at that point. His appearance was both mesmerizing and unsettling. He was known for wearing elaborate and androgynous golden outfits, complete with golden face paint and shimmering wigs. The Bizarre One's enigmatic persona added an aura of mystery and intrigue, making him stand out from the more traditional wrestlers. His golden attire was complemented by theatrical mannerisms and a slow seductive strut to the ring, and this all contributed to his larger than life persona. Goldust was a master manipulator who thrived on unsettling his opponents with mind games. He often groped his opponents, grinded on them and even kissed some of them, which almost got him beat up by the way. If sexual harassment was a wrestler, it would be Goldust. He was not afraid to cross boundaries and challenge societal norms to gain an edge over his adversaries. His shtick filled with homosexual undertones left others unsure about what to expect and this added an element of unpredictability to his actions inside and outside the ring. 
Goldust took advantage and played on the audience's homophobia. Literally every single derogatory profanity was yelled at him, even though he was not actually gay. Many people took issues with his gimmick, but it became a real problem when advertisers started to express concern over his provocative gimmick. This was when he was forced to tone down his character, and WWE even gave him a manager, his real life wife, Terry Reynolds, in an appeal to make him seem more heterosexual. Because of all of this, he was even made into the Intercontinental Champion and turned face. However, it was during the early days of Goldust where his substance abuse problems started. He had a problem with his knee and so he began to pop pills and despite Vincent McMahon warning him to be careful with the pills because he'd seen many other wrestlers destroyed by them, Goldust continued to take them and sooner or later he developed a full-blown pill addiction. By late 1997, his substance abuse problems began to have a negative effect on his marriage and even bled into his character on TV as Goldust was having a sort of identity crisis on screen when he turned back to heal. Every week he came in something different. Is ball gag gold dust, leash gold dust, Marilyn Manson gold dust, dusty gold dust, triple H gold dust, sable gold dust, and much more. It was truly bizarre. This whole changing of gimmick shtick was not getting over with the fans, and seeing that he was desperate to get over like he once was, he pitched to Vince McMahon to get legit breast implants. But Vince declined this because he never asked his talent to do something that he personally wouldn't do, and Vince would never ever get breast implants. This led to him getting fired from WWE in 1999, and his marriage to Terry Reynolds fell apart too as she divorced him. He was immediately picked up by WCW where he debuted his new character called Seven. The vignettes before his debut contained ominous footage of Dustin in full makeup standing outside a child's window. His character was dropped after TNT expressed concern that Seven could be misinterpreted as a child abductor. Dustin however still debuted the gimmick on TV though and he surprisingly removed his costume live on TV and delivered a work shoot promo where he buried the Seven character. He then reverted back to Dustin Rhodes but WCW folded just two years after he returned to the company. His substance abuse was still present though and they were only getting worse. Despite this, WWE decided to give him another chance and signed him to another contract in 2001. This run in WWE was pretty successful as he won the Hardcore Championship multiple times and had his entertaining run teaming with Booker T, winning the tag team gold. Even though on screen he was doing well, his personal demons were still plaguing him and this is what led to WWE releasing him from his contract in 2003. From this point on, Goldust was in a really really dark spot. Luckily at the time of him getting released, his father Dusty was working for TNA. So Dusty got him a job at TNA for $1,000 a show, which is not much but was enough to let him survive. He spent the next few years in TNA, other indie promotions and even Japan. He eventually debuted the character Black Rain in TNA and this was a sort of manifestation of his personal demons. Black Rain was intended to be the dark mirror to Goldust. Black Rain's persona was that of a twisted and deranged soul, embracing a more sadistic and disturbed character compared to his previous portrayals. Black Rain often exhibited a fascination with darkness and death and even carried a rat to the ring. This was just sad to watch because Dustin was clearly overweight and you could just tell his heart was not in the character. This character honestly seemed like a cry out for help from Dustin because at this point, he was really struggling with drugs as his substance abuse problems got completely out of control and he was spiraling into true darkness. In his book, Crossroads, Gold Dust Out of the Darkness, he explained the extent of his drug problem and he said, all I was doing was what little I had to do in the ring than hanging out spending my money on coke, pills and booze. I'd take painkillers, fine. I had been taking painkillers for so long that I had convinced myself that I really needed them. I was taking medication because I worked in a tough business. That was a story I had cemented into my mind. But drugs have a way of altering everything, including the stories you tell yourself. Eventually I started doing a little coke before matches while retaining my vow to never drink before I got into the ring, as if that was something to be proud of. Dustin's depression was smothering and he was slipping further and further into addiction and was destroying his life. I had a house paid for on acreage. I lost it all. Everything, I pawned everything that I had. I lived in a connected garage, one stall garage to somebody's house that I was renting out for a hundred bucks a month. And I had, I had a microwave and I had a bathroom. Lost everything. I had a little bitty Honda Civic car. Still trying to find things to pawn, still trying to sell things and try to, you know, steal from my dad. I was up to 80 pills a day. Wow. The last couple of years, I was up to a half a gallon of vodka 
every single day and an eight ball of cocaine every three days. This is incredibly dangerous and he also had a diet only consisting of pizza. He was severely unhealthy and death was literally waiting at his door. But then one day after a three day drug binge, he had finally hit rock bottom and decided that it was enough. He decided that he had to change and so he called his father, who was working at WWE at the time, and told him that he needed to go to rehab. Dusty managed to get WWE to pay for his rehab and Dustin spent 30 days in a rehab facility. And I'm happy to say that he hasn't touched any drugs ever since he got out of that rehab facility in 2008 till this day, which is a massive achievement. He then re-signed for WWE and he looked way better than he did as Black Rain. He completely lost all the extra weight and he looked great. It also looked like he gained a step in the ring as he looked better than he had ever been. Maybe because his mind was not so clouded by fog due to the drugs or being in the shadow of his father. Dustin was absolutely revitalized this time round and was a constant figure on WWE TV as well as being involved backstage in producing matches. That's how much trust Vincent Kennedy McMahon had for him. His personal life was in much better shape too as he even got remarried, but this time as a sober man. His career was truly on the up and this was when he did some of his best work in his career, teaming with his brother Cody, being managed by his father Dusty Rhodes. Him and Cody managed to win the tag team bouts from The Shield in one of the most feel good moments of the 2010s. This led to Cody turning into Stardust. Dustin had always hoped to face off against his brother Cody at Wrestlemania and so he began feuding with Cody but Vince didn't see the match between the two as worthy of being at Wrestlemania and so they blew off their feud a month before Wrestlemania at the WWE pay per view Fastlane. Dustin felt hard done by this and was falling out of love with professional wrestling. What made things worse was when his father Dusty Rhodes passed away in 2015. This absolutely broke him and people around him were worried that he would slip back into his old bad habits but fortunately he did not and he stood strong. Dusty's passing however led to Cody leaving WWE, but Dustin stayed even though his passion for wrestling was sucked out by WWE not booking him well and not respecting him like how he should be respected. Cody ultimately then created a new wrestling company with the elite called All Elite Wrestling AEW, who were WWE's biggest competitor in almost 20 years. Seeing all of this, Dustin allowed his contract in WWE to run out and he signed for All Elite Wrestling in 2019. His first match in the company was with his brother Cody Rhodes at AEW's inaugural pay per view, Double or Nothing, in 2019. And this match was a match for the ages. The two men engaged in a bloody, brutal, and emotionally charged affair that left many fans in attendance crying. It is widely considered to be the best wrestling match of 2019 and the best match of either man's career. It just showed how much Dustin still has in the tank. Ever since then, he has gone on to be a player coach in AEW, being regularly included in backstage roles as well as working particularly close with the women's division. He's also been a constant figure in AEW television. At 54 years old now, he's showing no signs of slowing down and is passing on his knowledge to the younger generation. Dustin Rose has been through a lot, but on his path of recovery, he has rediscovered his love for wrestling and ultimately, for life itself. His story is so inspiring, not because it's just a story of a man's triumph, but it's a testament to the human spirit's ability to conquer adversity and rise above the darkest of clouds. That's the story of the man who rose from the shadows, the natural Dustin Rhodes. Thank you for watching this video, if you enjoyed this video, please check out our other videos, and also please like, share, comment, and subscribe, but anyway, goodbye.